Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Adam Pascal. I am so excited to have him here on our show. He is a part of theatrical history. He created the role of Roger Davis in Rent, earning a Best Actor Tony nomination, and then reprising his performance in the 2005 movie adaptation. He has since juggled a career as a concert and recording artist with leading roles on Broadway in Aida, Cabaret, Chicago, Memphis, Disaster, and Something Rotten. So you've been kept pretty busy, huh? I, I'm trying, you know, um, Broadway is, is a wonderful place to work, but the jobs are few and far between. So I, I've been, I've, I, I feel like I've been very fortunate to have uh, had the opportunities that I've had so far. Well, you're obviously very good at what you do. And it's really sad that Broadway is closed. It is. It is. Not just Broadway, but theater all over the world is yeah. closed. So really national sad. tours, regional theaters, everything's closed. Yeah. So what have you been doing to keep yourself occupied? Well, um, I do. Uh, I, I have been fortunate enough to have uh, had the opportunity to do a number of like Zoom type performances. Uh, I've done uh, the very rare live performance during this lockdown, this sort of socially distanced live performance uh, for sm very small socially distanced audiences. Uh, I've done a couple of outdoor performances. Um, and so, you know, I, we, we, all of us in the entertainment industry, certainly in the live performance aspect of the entertainment industry, have had to figure out ways in this new landscape in which we live uh, to, to earn a living. And so um, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't difficult, but I also feel like I've been luckier than some in, in regards to being able to find things to do. Well, that's good to hear. I just wanna ask you, do you connect to heaven when you sing? Is it a spiritual practice for you? I mean, it's a talent, it's a gift. Do you recognize it as that? I, I do. Um, but I am definitely, I, I wouldn't say that I connect to heaven because that's not something that I ascribe to. Um, I, I am, I'm definitely a, a, I consider myself a spiritual person and, and connect to things that are spiritual to me. Heaven is not a concept or a construct in which I, uh, believe in. So would you, would you say you connect to all things spiritual, the universe? Yes, I, I'm definitely uh, a, someone who connects to the universe and and uh, to what could consider to be a sort of a hippie term, but cosmic consciousness in a way. Um, no. um, well, I, I think it was sort of coined probably back in the, yeah, back in the sixties. Yeah, um, yeah, um, but but definitely a, a, a cosmic consciousness, a, a, a collective one, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who's, who's very, very interested in, in the origins of reality, you know what I mean? And, and, and all that that encompasses, in, including consciousness and, uh, and, and spirituality, you know, having those concepts be somewhat unique to the individual and what they believe and what they perceive as reality, you know? So, you know, music is a universal language. You know, do you think that music can help us heal? You know, I, I, I do. Collectively? I, th I think that music is the greatest gift that humanity has given to this universe, is, is, is our music, the music that we as human beings create. I think that um, in many ways, that's why we're here. I think that, um, you know, I, I don't know if this is true, but I remember reading an article or hearing, maybe it's sort of an urban legend about how certain music that is so universally loved, Mozart, the Beatles, you know, whatever it is, these, 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 this music that has become so uh, uh, beloved by the entire of humanity for the most part has some in that if, if you map it out in uh, in certain audio wavelengths like it matches the brain waves you know of like the human brain in certain ways and like they they correspond to each other and that always made that always made sense to me 
Um, I, I choose to believe that whether it's true or not. Um, but I, but I, but I definitely think that that music is is our our universal gift, you know. And I think that um, uh, I, I think that it is the most healing thing that we have because it's 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 the only thing. Not that everybody listens to the same music, but music is something that I think all of humanity is drawn to in one way, shape, or form. You know, I. I'm very drawn to music in, in so many different ways. And it moves me. Like certain music can make me cry. Certain yeah. music can make me, me feel alive. Um, right. And we all have some you know, special songs that kind of make us feel that way. Do you have a, a special song? I, I wouldn't say I have one special song um, because it, 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 it so much is dependent upon the moment and the mood that I'm in. But certainly there are songs that like for example if i if i have to do a scene on camera it, it, i i can't really do this for the stage because i don't have the time but if i if i have to do a scene where i have to get very emotional on camera um and i have and i want to prepare for for that scene i will go i, I have a, a playlist of certain songs that i will go to that just make me sob you know, if I'm if I put myself in the right frame of mind, they will make me sob. Certain songs by U2, um, you know, certain songs um, by by Billy Joel, certain songs by The Beatles. Um, you know, there there are there are certain songs that I go to that just have Cat Stevens. You know what I mean? Again, like certain things that tap into my heart in a way that, quite frankly, in a way that I don't always want to go to. You know what I mean? There, you know. Um, Cats in the Cradle by Cat Stevens, Now That I Have Children, is a song that I have a really hard time listening to. I have sons. It's about this man and his sons. It makes me emotional to think about it. Um, but, you know, like, I can't listen to that song unless I'm ready to cry. <laughs> you know, if it comes on the radio, I have to turn it off. But yet I will use a song like that in preparation for a scene in which I have to get to this place that I have to get to. That's so funny you should bring that up because that played yesterday. I was in the car and driving and that was playing yesterday. And, I, and immediately I go back to what kind of parent have I been? Like, right. like, like are they, <laughs> right. they do something wrong and then they're going to do it back and I'm going to yeah. lose my children. Yeah, that's a right. very emotional. You know, what really moves me is Eva Cassidy. Okay. Um, Eva Cassidy, I just, I listen to Eva Cassidy and I just want to, I mean, sob. Her energy is so pure, and it comes through in the song. You know, of so course, it's not just the song. I think it's the energy of the person yeah. singing the song as well. You know, yes, and it's and it's and it, it it's all of those things. It's it's the tone of their voice. It's it's the melody. It's it's it is. It's it's the you're right. It's the energy of the person, and um and you know, it's 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 amazing to me. And like you said, and then there are songs that that can have the opposite effect in that they they get you excited and they make you happy and they you know and so but it really depends uh, you know it's 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 very dependent upon the individual and the moment that they are in and how that music will affect them in that moment do you believe that when you sing that um you are channeling you know the universe spirit or something else like something else is moving through you or like it's like an out of body experience almost I, I, well, you know, there. I, I don't know if I would phrase it that way. There certainly are many times when I'm performing where you connect with a live audience, and this this only happens when you're in front of people, not in a recording studio, at least for me. But when I'm in front of an audience and there is a a shared experience that you have together, that is definitely spiritually energetic you know in, in in its in its experience um and 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 it doesn't always happen you know it it but but there are times and 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 those are the, you know those are the moments that we sh continually strive for is to try and create those create those moments um well you know, uh, i think that when people are sitting in an audience that whether they realize it or not, they're energetically connected to each other and then connected to you and the music. Yes, absolutely. And I've had that same experience as an audience member. You know, I've had that experience as an audience member seeing, I mentioned you too. You too, I mean, if you want to talk music and spirituality, there's there's no, there's no, as far as I'm concerned, there's no better band 
that has made that connection to spirituality more than than you two. And I and every time I see them live, it it it, it you know it it just it solidifies that concept in me because they are. They, you know, they perform in these arenas and in these stadiums, and yet you feel like this collective oneness with them and with everybody around you. It's like their music was written for the masses to join together. You know, you know it's so funny, but you mentioned Billy Joel. So I'm a Long Islander. So as am I. Yeah. So you know, Billy Joel's in Long Island, and yep. you go to the Garden. Um, and so the last time I was there, I sat in the band seats, which was kind of cool, but you can, I could feel the people behind me. Okay. And the yeah. energy, like we're all the same because right. we're New Yorkers or we're Long Islanders or we follow Billy and this singing of his life. And isn't this wonderful? You know? Right. So yeah, I think that happens. And when it happens, it's like exhilarating. You know? Yeah, it creates a it creates you know one of the, the a night to remember for you know and again especially Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden all you know hometown shows like those are magical they really are they're truly magical you know and 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 to be able to share an exp an intimate experience with you know twenty five thousand people is an incredible thing to be able to do you know what I mean to to have that much energy collectively focused in the same place. But how does that feel when you're the one that they're focused on? It's it can be scary, it you know it can be scary you know um, it, 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 again you know I I I can recall standing on stage at the Royal Albert Hall in London on several different occasions to a sold out audience as being part of a larger show, not my own personal show, um, but this, and especially at a place like that that has such history to it. You know, you step on a stage like that, that, you know, has been there for many, many, many years and had many, many, many incredible artists perform on it from all aspects and all, all genres of music. Um, and it's sort of like, I, I it, it was like this, like a spiritual connection to something that had such deep roots in, in ways that you don't get in this country because uh, because our our culture does not mm -hmm. the roots don't grow go that deep you know but when you're in Europe or any you're anywhere really outside of North America that has you know thousands of years of of deep rooted you know history um, there's 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 an incredible connection there and um, I have you know I, I I'd be lying if I said that. I've had that experience as a performer in the way that I've had it as an audience member. I, I, I've, I've had it more as an audience member because I don't feel the pressure on myself mm -hmm. to create something for someone else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, you feel you as a performer, you, you, you want to be transcendent. You want to be completely in the moment. You know what I mean? Uh, you want to be as mindful as you can and be in, in the moment, but you know, there, there are so many other factors that get in the way and that get into your head. And like, you know, again, sold out Royal Albert Hall, like all I can think of is like, am I going to forget the lyrics in front of all these people? Yeah. You, know? you know, so, so there are these other factors that come into play, but there are those moments of glory where you just, you know, like it just, it, you're in the moment and you know, you're not going to forget anything and you connect with the audience. Um, and and they connect with you and, and, and you can feel it. You can definitely feel it. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's a fascinating experience. There's nothing else like it. How did uh, music influence your life or help you cope with situations and difficulties that have come up? Um, well, it, it influenced me in that it, I, I discovered it at such a young age and I discovered that it was such an integral part of who I was at such a young age. So, you know, I started singing and performing in, in bands at, you know, 11 years old. You know, I, I, I discovered this passion that I had for singing and for music and for, you know, creating music and playing music with other people, you know. And it's just consistently always been there for me, whether I wanted it or not, you know. Yesterday was a really, really hard day for me. And I won't get into the details because it's not really necessary but i had a really really difficult day yesterday and i went on a long drive four and a half hour drive and i just happened to put on the billy i, I said what can i listen to that is going to soothe my soul and billy joel has a channel on sirius right now i put on the billy joel channel and it 
it took me through the roller coaster of emotion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From from the heights of 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 happiness to the depths of sadness and everything in between. But you know, it, it was this cathartic roller coaster of experience that I needed to get me through that trip. You know what I mean? To get me where I needed to go. Um, and it was at times painful. It was at times beautiful. Um, it brought me back to my youth. It brought me back to Long Island. It brought me back to New York. It brought me, you know what I mean? It brought me back to growing up. And, and you know, I think that that's one of the greatest things that music can do for us is, is to change our state of mind and change our frame of reference when we need it most. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when we're not even sometimes when we're not even aware that we need that, you know? Yeah, I, it's amazing. You know what I always find amazing is notes. If you play them one at a time, it's just a note. But when you play them together, it makes something amazing and beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like an analogy for people, you know, alone, we're good. It's pretty, it's nice, but together we're powerful. Absolutely. It's like the sound of a chord. You know what I mean? The sound of a chord on a, a, a one particular chord played once can can be like if you think about the the the, the last chord in a day in the life by the Beatles, the, that last orchestral chord played on the piano um, has more emotion in it than than many full songs by artists that I can think of, you know what I mean? Just that one chord. And, 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 and you're right. The, the, the collection of notes has the, that ability to do that. Yeah. And then once you put a voice to it, you know, forget it, you know, it's just right. amazing. Yeah. You know, right. you, you played a, a, some difficult characters on the stage. Um, what, you know, like in Aida, um, it was about destiny and reincarnation and lovers meeting again in another lifetime. Has that changed your perspective on life? Has it taught you something? How does that kind of role like that affect you? You know, I, um, you know, I had, I had, and, and still have to a certain extent, um, a, a, a wavering opinion about things like reincarnation. I remember when I was, a, I remember when I was a, in my early twenties, late teens, maybe reading a book called Many Lives, Many Masters. Oh yeah, which is still um, a bestseller. Which, yeah. Well, Brian and, and it, still out there. And I was fascinated by that concept and by that book. And I remember writing a song after reading that book and talking about the silver cord, I remember the, 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 the concept of the silver cord was, was, in, was a lyric in this song and staying connected and then having that, the cord break and you know, like the whole, everything about that book like really affected me. Um, I have since, you know, sort of, like I said, wavered back and forth between the, what I believe, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely agnostic when it comes to, to that kind of stuff, um, uh, you know, um, because, you know, I, I, whereas on the one hand, I am a believer in all things spiritual. I'm not a believer in anything supernatural, if that makes sense. So, so what I mean by that is if, the way that I think about things is that anything is possible, but whatever is possible has an explanation to it. And that explanation lies within the laws of the universe, many of which we are are undiscovered. That you know what I mean? There's a there's a there's a there's a, a quote that says, you know, the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, it is queerer than we can suppose. Queer obviously meaning otter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and I and I believe that there's, you know, there there we know such a small fraction about this world that we live in and consciousness in the universe and so you know I, I i my my beliefs are that anything is possible but there is an explanation to whatever is possible if that makes any sense it does um, but what do you think the universe is when you refer to the universe what is the universe um people sometimes refer to the universe because they don't necessarily um, think of God, this man with the long white beard, you know, personally, right. God to me is a vibration of love. Okay. Right. It is all love. It's a vibration. Sure. 
It's not a man, it's not a woman, it's we don't need to, pers you know, to personify it. And then people talk about the universe, but what, what is the universe? If it's not supernatural, then what is it? Um, I don't know. I wish, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I can, I, can, I can certainly state the obvious and say it is all that we see, it is all that's around us, it is all that is encompassing, but I believe there is certainly way more than that. If, if you rely on what your eyes, only what your eyes see or what your ears hear, we're missing yeah. most of everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that it is, it is all the things that we can perceive of an experience and all the things that we can't even conceive of. Okay. So um, when you say you don't believe in anything supernatural, so angels, um, no, uh, not, not, not in, not in the, not in the traditional biblical construct. I don't believe in that. Um, do I believe that there could be forces, entities, energies, things that people on certain levels of consciousness can interact with? Sure. But I believe that there is an explanation that is unknown to us for what that is. Okay. Um, you know, I don't think that, so I do believe because I feel them and I communicate with them. I, I do believe in these supernatural forces, but, you know, I am not stuck on the lingo, you know, right. that, um, you know, organized religion puts forward. Just like right. I don't believe God is a man in a long white beard sitting on a throne somewhere. You know, right. I do believe it's an energy of love. And the more we buy into this and try to be good people, we enter into the vibration of love. Um, but you know, can I, can I ask you something? Sure. <laughs> is, is, is that, is that God in which you perceive in the way that you perceive it, a creator God? Um, in, I do, do you, believe, I do believe in a creator, um, because no matter what, I mean, at, at the beginning there had to be something. And I also believe that you can co-create with this energy. Okay. okay. So this energy is always creating and this energy right. also lives within each of us. So it's right. not like, you know, up in the sky, you know, I refer to heaven because this is the lingo that people know, you know, we of don't course. have language to kind of do all of this. So, you know, I believe that this energy, um, the vibration that is God, or you can call it Sam, or you can call it it, or you can call it the universe, whatever you want, is around us and within us. And that's right. how we connect with each other. So it's not just the um, collective unconsciousness. It's also a connection energetically through that God source, so right. to speak. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yes. I'm not hung up on, listen, I have people coming to me of every different religion and every different non-religion. Um, and it's all good, you know? Right. It's all, you know, being an agnostic is a belief system, okay? Right. It is. Um, being an atheist is a belief system. Believe what you want, you know, if it works for you. Um, but you can't deny when you feel love. And we can't describe love, you know? We don't, I mean, when it's taken away from us, it, it does hurt and it provides growth, but you can't deny that. And it's right. what everybody searches for. So that's, that's what I think. That's what I believe, you know? So, you yeah. know, whether you call them angels or you call them entities or beings or um, whatever it is, I certainly do believe that, you know, our lives do not end on this planet. Right. Understood. And I, and I, 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 I lean towards agreeing with you. Um, I, I, I really do. But again, m m I think that wherever we go, in whatever form that takes, there is a ex an unknown explanation for it. And you know, look, if you clearly human beings since re throughout recorded history have been interacting and have been having experiences with things that they can't explain or understand, and it and and it very consistently comes back to this concept of angels or entities or be whatever it is so there's this, clearly something is happening and and does happen to us as humans mm -hmm. in 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 within the consciousness that we possess so so i i certainly don't deny that at all you know i mean it's it's obvious that there is something happening um and and we all choose to 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 
look at it, you know, right. look at it the way that we look at it, you yeah, know, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's, it's a reality. Yeah. You know, um, and it's complicated, but, and we don't, we won't know all the answers, you know, not, right. not, not now, someday, right. maybe, um, maybe when we pass. And so we have no choice, but to keep it as simple as possible and go through the motions, right. You know, and right. live from, from that, from that place. You know, right. um, that's that's really what's in, what's important and learn from the things that we're doing. Like like you played a man who was HIV positive. I mean, I can't imagine like, do you become that person like like you? Do you that's, I, I, yeah. You know, that's for me. That's I I know I, not in this, not in the way that I think you are referring to, it. Um, you know, uh, I, I, as an actor, I try to embody a character in the, mo in the most natural, organic way that I can. And for me, a lot of times that requires not overthinking it. You know what I mean? Not, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that when I step out of the wings onto the stage, I say, okay, I'm no longer Adam, I am now Roger or Ronda Mays or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I don't approach it that way. I try and bring Adam's humanity and, and Adam's sensibilities to this person and their circumstances, you know? So I don't, I don't invest myself in that way to where I feel like I am HIV positive. Like I, I you know, like I, 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 I don't know how to do that. I'm not that kind of actor. I try and just bring the humanity to every one of these characters as best I can. Well, you're doing a really good job. And it's hard to do it eight, you know, to do it eight times a week. I would imagine it would be hard to leave that in the theater. Were you to embody that or take that in mm -hmm. on such a deep level for me. So I, I do my best to, to uh, you know, embody these characters to the best of my ability but in a way in which I can leave it at the stage door when I go home every night. So you have two sons? I do. Um, how do you um, express, you know, and it doesn't need to be with the language of spirituality, but how are you helping them in their soul growth and expressing, you know, their spirituality or your spirituality to them? Well, we, we do, we've talked about it a lot, you know, my feelings about religion and, and, and supernatural existence and, or lack thereof. And, you know, I grew up Jewish from Long Island and, you know, so, um, and, and, and I, and so they know how I feel, they know how their mom feels, which is very close to how I feel about things. Um, but they're also very inquisitive and, and I, and I encourage them to be as inquisitive to all that they find interesting. And also, if something, if they were to believe in something that I didn't believe in, but it brought them joy and happiness and love, I would accept that, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Um, that's really all I'm interested in. I'm not interested in instilling in them my belief system. I'm interested in them developing their own and finding love through that you know and yeah. i think that they and i think that they've done that you know well you know um, gilbron said you know that our children come through us you know we have to let them go and yeah. on their own lives like we don't have anything to do with it except being the ones that brought them forward right you know? i mean of course we you know can influence them and we raise them but they also chose us so you always hope that right. It's going, it's going to work. Um, can I just say there's a woman standing next to you? This is so bizarre. So do you remember Laverne and Shirley and Laverne wore um, a, a, a shirt that had like an L on it? This one yep. has a W, okay? A W. A W. And she has on bell bottoms, okay? Um, and she's very pretty. Do you know who this is? She loves you <laughs> very much and she's very proud. Um, sure. It's my mother. Okay. She wants you to know that you are absolutely not alone in what you're going through. Okay. And that she absolutely also understands it. 
okay? She's right there next to you. Um, do you have something of hers that you hold in your hand sometimes? Uh, I, I don't. I actually don't have a lot of her stuff. Um, I just have photos. I, I don't. I don't have anything physically. Okay, but that was hers. Something um, that um, maybe one of a uh, sibling of yours has that you can hold in your hand. Okay, um, you know she's very pretty. Like I would say, like she's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Like she's kind of cool. Like she gets what you're saying. Okay, gets what you're saying. Um, definitely there. Um, she's with um, a, a man that has a name, uh, Frank, um, Phil, a name like that, um, you know? And Mike, that's her, her father. That's her, her father. Very close to him? Uh, in ways, yeah. Yeah, okay. he was he was always a, a very gentle, loving, um, pure love. It was my grandfather, her father. But you carry that of him. He's saying, and that's your spirituality, is you carry this that I had, you carry it. And I'm very proud of that. And as opposed to the other grandfather who you were not as close with, yeah, um, he feels That's very, true. you know what I mean? Like very like, this is the way it is, this is the way it is. And you kind of, and I don't feel a very deep closeness. Um, did you- I wasn't close to him. Yeah, and he's sorry. He's saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Even though he was born in this country, the other grandfather, um, but I feel he's very ethnic. Okay, there's like, he's ethnic. I, I don't know, he's coming through like, you know, I follow the ways of my people, you know, that kind yes. of, that kind of thing. Yes. And there, and there, everything was very black and white. Were you closer to your stepfather than your father? Because your stepfather um, loves you. My what? Stepfather loves you. I, I know he does. Um, it, I, I, I was closer to him in many ways. Um, and uh, we had we have been estranged for a number of years. And we just had a we just reconciled last week. OK, um, he, is he having some issues with dementia or forgetting things? Yes. Yeah, that's why I feel him. He looks at you as his son. OK, um, and he, and, you know, and I can hear him because he's kind of in and out of lucidity, kind of. Um, and, you know, what I'm feeling is that um, he was never afraid to let you go on your journey. OK, like it was an open book, even though it might have felt that he wasn't right there supporting you. And your mother's laughing and she's saying, yeah, he could be a pit of a pill sometimes. OK, um, but he's a good man a good man um, and she's happy that um, that she's able to be with you at this time and she's saying understand this so whatever's going on in your life um, this too shall pass okay it will pass life will go on you're looking at it from the right way and it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve what you thought was was who you are because you're losing a piece of of yourself right now, um, and she's saying it's okay. She totally. She's saying I've been there. I understand. She smells really good, really good. Um, yeah, she comes to you in this in this wonderful smell. But who is the smoker? Her. Yeah, because I feel like it's covering the smoke. Like if yeah, I yeah, she, she was a smoker. On, yeah, heavy smoker. I just spritz this on, and she dies too yep. young. She dies yes. too young. She's she had a lot more to say and a lot more to do. Okay, um, she's walking right alongside you. You're not alone. Um, she would um, she would love you to talk to her more, and she would love you to get something that she. I don't know why I keep seeing a rock. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, I keep seeing a rock. I'll have to talk to my sister. There may be there may be something like a rock, a crystal. I don't know what this is, but I feel like it's you hold it. You can just like throw it in your pocket kind of thing, okay? Um, and so if your sister has it, she wants you to have it so you can remember, you know, that um, that she's always with you, always with you. And you're a really good father, she's saying, a really good father, okay? Um, and a good husband too, okay? Um, you know, we, every- oh, No, not that one. <laughs> well, this is what your mother's saying. You know, every, every piece of our, sometimes people come together and then, you know, the karma is complete and they move on. 
but there's so much that's learned through every relationship, okay? Um, and that's really what's important. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, thank you so, so much for being on the show. I so enjoyed speaking to you. I love Likewise. To artists and I love people. I love talking to people who have a different view on things because I think that this is the way the world goes. The same thing with politics. You know, we all respect each other, but we're allowed to think different things. As long as it's from a place of love, that's, that's all that really matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. Thank, thank you so much um, for being on today. And to everybody out there, um, you can watch videos of Adam's um, movies and TV shows that he's been in. I, it's all out there, right? It is, indeed. And, you know, um, and when he comes to a place by you and he's doing a concert or something like that, go out and see him because he's more than a great performer. He's a really nice soul and person. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anna.